Uh, let's practice our reaction, okay, uh, to what it's like when we're flying it. Oh my God! Whoa! Unbe oh! But it's I'm, I'm looking at. Oh, goggles. what's your experience as a ride along flying butterfly? I am blown away. Oh wow! Wow! Incredible! Okay, now I'm gonna raise the throttle. I'm gonna do a flip. Smoothest flip ever. I think it just finished flashing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, Joshua I'm, sure. I'm, I'm Joshua Bardwell. I'm Joshua Bardwell. Hey, don't talk over He's me. He's Joshua Bardwell. Anyway. I'm an interrupter, so. You're all right. I'm a, I am also an interrupter, as anyone who's had a conversation with me knows. <laughs> I try to rein it in. And this is me reining it in, by the way. So, oh, you're, yeah, you're when, I do, when I do interviews, people say, would you just shut up and let the guest talk? I'm like, that's not my style. <laughs> I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. And in fact, I hope we all learn something today because we're gonna be flying the Helio Spring flight controller with Butterflight on it, and we're gonna learn how awesome it is. Oh, by the way, who, who is this guy? Who are you? I'm uh, Chris, Random FPV. This is Random FPV. Uh, thank you for helping me out with this video. Uh, Chris, he, he has the Dead Man Show. Link in the video description. It's a really awesome podcast. Is it a podcast? We're, it's a YouTube actually, live stream. Yeah, we're working on podcast right now. That should be up hopefully next week. Yeah. And um, let's see. Your rate, that'll be what? Three weeks from now? Yeah. And um, I'm not you know, fast. I'm you know. thorough. But, That's what uh, I told myself. Yeah, live stream. We do interviews. Um, all sorts of different manufacturers and products. Um, working on doing some live stream of actual flights too so yeah and you, another thing you do is you build quads you uh you have a company quad house mm -hmm. where you do custom builds and uh and that's why when i got this guy this is the helio spring flight controller which is the the butterflight flight controller although we'll talk more about that in a minute when i got that and i said i'm so packed up right now i cannot possibly find time to build it I sent it over to you and you built it for me. And so today we're gonna fly it. And right now we have the old firmware on it that was on it months ago, a month ago. We're gonna fly that and then we're gonna put the new firmware on it. I'll walk you through putting the new firmware on it and we're gonna fly the new firmware, which people tell me, and by people I mean the people from Butterfly, tell me it's so way, nice. way better. So that's what we're gonna do today. Stay tuned. Before we get started with the flying, I want to take just a few minutes and, and talk about the flight controller here. Now, I did the review of the flight controller where I talked about, you know, the pad layout and the features and all that stuff, but there's a relationship here between Butterflight and Heliospring, and I think it may not be entirely clear to a lot of people. So, what's the relationship between Helio Spring and Butterflight? Are they like the same company? Are they different companies? So, um, from, from we interviewed Helio um, on, on the, the, on the show. Dead Band Show. Link in the video description. Shameless plug. Yeah. And uh, from what they said, basically, Butterflight was coming up at the same time they were coming up. Um, they're not the same company, to, to make that clear. Uh, Butterfly's handling the code side, and Helio has chosen to embrace that. Um, basically, they liked what Butterfly was doing. Right. And so they're actually, um, I believe you were hinting about some special sauce that Helio has put in the unit right. also, right? So so everybody knows about Butterfly, and Butterfly has the Kalman filter. Ooh, excellent. But actually... What Helio Spring is doing with their IMUF technology, I don't even know what that stands for, they've got a F3 processor on the board running custom code, custom filtering, that's actually, I think it's different from, it's not like they just took the Butterfly Kalman filters, stuffed it into the F3 coprocessor. Right. You're actually getting something unique with this technology, the IMUF technology, that is yeah. not just Butterfly. And this is the only way to get it, although that's not always going to be true, right? The Helio Correct. Yeah, they've talked about licensing it, um, which they'll license out their technology basically to other manufacturers, so we could see this we branching see, out. We could see a JBF4 yeah. with the IMUF technology, yeah. you know, etc. Okay, so that's, let now it's, but the bottom line is, let's see how it flies. I mean, so theoretically. What, theoretically. Theoretically. It could happen. JBF4. I'm not saying that anything is in the works, I'm just saying it's a possibility. Let's see. But they're what, gone too now. What that butter is like. How much up tilt have you got on this guy? Mm. Doesn't look like a ton. 30, 28, 30. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not used to the stick. You're, uh, you've got the. There you go, there's my. 
So I, I, you know, I'm gonna just start flying it. A lot of times I'll do some crazy crop washy things, but. Let's see. Not seeing prop wash coming out of those big drops. No. No but prop wash there at the bottom. You used to have it. And that was what I was talking about. That did improve prop wash. That's where it, so the noise, the noise, uh, the filtering really makes shines is in prop wash handling. People wonder, why do you focus so much on prop wash? It's because if you, if you ignore prop wash oscillation, and by the way, prop wash oscillation is this stuff. Listen, listen to the motor. It's a little hard to get it to come out. Okay. There's a kind of a shuddering in the motors in like sharp turns. This is doing a pretty good job, honestly. You can sometimes see it. You can mostly hear it. Yeah, a little shudder. I bet the GoPro will bring it out, though. It's kind of hard to bring it out. It's doing a really good job, honestly. So Total stock, too. So... I'm trying to bring it out. It happens when the quad is sliding backwards into its own prop wash. There, just there a little, just a, it's really hard to bring it out, to be honest, it's flying really good. And the reason we focus on it so much is because if you were to ignore just that aspect of the tune, then it's actually pretty easy to get a good, a decent tune out of a quad. That's the hardest thing to get rid of and the sort of last frontier of tuning in a sense. So doing moves like this where we're, there was a little bit of a shudder there as we fell. Doing moves like this where we're dropping and then we raise the throttle. And I'll bring it out. I think it's flying really well. I got you. So coming up on the throttle as you're descending, I, it makes sense. As you drop, yeah. You, I mean, here's another. Right there, yeah. As you're literally just sliding backwards, trying to get the angle exactly there was a little bit. The angle at which the props are facing relative to the quad's movement is what causes it. And that's why if, if you watch a really good pilot like do a move, big power loop moves and stuff, the, he'll come onto the throttle at a certain angle. I see we're low, I gotta land, I see. 14.3, I'm gonna tell you better. He'll come onto the throttle coming out of the power loop and the angle at that the quad is at relative to Where's the disarm? There we go. The angle the quad's at relative to its direction of motion it is it will prevent the prop wash. People say, why does guys like Stinger Swarm have a perfect tune? It's actually not. You could give him a sort of badly tuned quad, and he knows that if you're coming down mm -hmm. like this, and the quad's like this, and you're moving right into your own prop wash, and you hit the throttle, it'll shudder. But if you kind of kick it forward just a little bit, now you're moving this way, but you're pushing this way, and it'll sort of push it out of its own prop wash, you won't get the oscillation but with a great tune or a great flight controller you can be more you can think about that less it's doing it's flying really good honestly i want to do one more pack with this tune and then we'll upgrade it Prop wash there, that's a place where prop wash would normally have come out. I'm not trying to make the best freestyle video in the world, mind you. I'm just, there was a little bit. It feels, feels good though. Not bad freestyle. There was a little. Mm -hmm. I'm just pointing it out because for people who maybe don't know what it is or uh, it's obvious to somebody who knows what it is like a wine connoisseur going oh I taste hints of you know nutmeg and somebody's like I don't know like wine to me hmm. trying to you know help people who may not know what to listen for to notice it wow. now I'm going to start turning
So there you go. Okay, I feel like I got a sense of how it flies. Just kind of throwing it around there at the end. Okay, now let's update the firmware and let's see how it flies on. What are you doing? I just always have to get a funny shot and then the GoPro <laughs> footage of a minute. <laughs> okay. Let's update the firmware and let's see if the, uh, you know, if the magic becomes even more magical. So I would say that at this moment, it's flying pretty good on default PIDs. It's not like the best ever I've ever seen. Um, it, what, what would that even mean? Um, but yeah, if I had built my first quad and it was flying like that, I wouldn't complain. It's not doing anything. It's not really doing anything that would annoy me. No. And I go, ooh, I gotta fix this. So, let's update it. 351, let's do show unstable releases, although I see the unstable releases already. I see the RC8 and RC9, even though I didn't tick show unstable releases. <laughs> so oh, well. stable over there. Hey, buddy. You're, uh, Those are stable. Flashing. Yeah, go for it. Who cares? Mm, they put the uh, they put the erasing status line here at the bottom instead of here in the window. That's nice. You don't have to scroll down for it. I wonder if that's a butterfly thing or if that's a new beta flight thing. I don't know. And I'm going to show you that flight in a second. But before I do, I got to let you know. As I was going through all the data later, I realized that when I restored the configuration after upgrading to the latest Butterfly, I accidentally restored in an old set of PIDs. So the first flight was done on the default PIDs. The second flight was done on not the default PIDs. So we're not really in the world of apples to apples comparisons. I'm still going to show you the flight. But you should know that the P gains are lower and the D gains are lower on the second flight. Which is interesting because, well, you'll see in a minute, we actually ended up with hotter motors. So we ended up with worse prop wash handling, which could be explained by the P gains and the D gains being lower. But we also ended up with hotter motors, which is kind of the opposite of that. And I called up uh, Mark Spetz, UAV Tech, to talk about it. And he said he's seeing some other people having the same thing. I asked Tim Sweet from uh he's a, a butterfly guy and he said well we're still dialing in the defaults it's a release candidate so i'm going to show you the flight but it's not really like an apples to apples comparison with a first flight and you should know that the thing is you fly it on the release candidate and it you get a result and people go oh well it's a release candidate we're still dialing it in but if i hadn't flown it on the release candidate then people would say oh well you should have tried the release candidate it's the best thing since sliced jesus so kind of anyway here's the flight F4? Yeah. Here we go. Arm. Okay, we're armed. See you, you up. You on it? No, it's not grabbing it. There we go. R5. I don't want you to miss the, the magic. Yeah, the fly. Here we oh, go. Else You're good. I'll get it that time. Bro. There we go. I got it. A little bit of bobble on the nose, just a little when I really mess with it. Did it have that before? Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure that the rates are, the rates don't feel right. They may not. I thought they did. That's okay. Let's abuse it a little. I feel like at this exact moment, the prop wash handling is worse. I was gonna say the same thing. Um, nah, the rates are fine. It was just me. Okay. Well, maybe we should look over the props. Is the only thing I think of. Maybe I got under one with a soldering iron or something. Does that affect that? I mean, I guess, but not that significant. I will say though that considering that's what we kind of focused on, that's all we could get it to do, I am kind of mentally looking for it more. So maybe that, you know. Well, we compare the footage. That's true. The 
battery got a little lower and I think it started doing a little better. Maybe it's just a tuning thing, but since we're doing both of these guys on the default PIDs. Yeah, that is really weird, man. It, it seemed like it was flying better just, just a little bit, though. Just I a mean, little. It was, it was like, smoother. Like on a dial, it'd be like two on the first time and a one on this one, you know, like real close. Yeah, or it's like not... a nine and an eight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then that be would generous. be, be accurate. Generous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna piss people One off. to two is out of three, of course. Right, there you go. A two to a 1.75. Oh, there he is. Hey, Mark. How you doing, man? I'm here with uh, Random FPV. We're flying Helio Spring Butterfly, and I had a filtering question for you. Okay. Uh, so we put RC9 on and flew it. And at this point, I called up Mark Spetz, who you may know on YouTube as UAV Tech. Link to his channel down in the video description. And he is a guy doing so much research into filtering butterfly. Coleman filters and I, we talked about why I got hot motors on Butterfly RC9 and why it didn't on 330 and and in fact that conversation was so good I'm going to have him back on the channel and we're going to do a little one on one but that is going to do it for this video because I knocked the flight controller off the I knocked the quad off the table and the USB cable was plugged in and it ripped the USB port off the flight controller so we couldn't do any more work and heck we're at 15 minutes anyway which is probably longer than most of you guys even watched so that's gonna do it thank you so much to well thank you so much to random fpv for coming and helping me out with this check out links to to the dead band show and uh quad house his uh his quad build company down in the video description thanks to mark spatz for coming on the show later and talking about black box thanks to the butterfly devs and the helio devs for helping me out doing all this research i really do feel that Butterfly and Helio, I'm very positive about them, despite the fact that this video didn't say they're the best thing ever, everyone should jump to them, all yada yada yada. I love seeing these guys pushing the bounds of what's possible in an open source way. I love seeing Kaylin Dorr contributing in, to an open source project. Uh, that's all very good stuff, and I hope to do some more testing of Butterfly and Helio, maybe in other quads. Maybe I won't break the USB connector this time. <laughs> Looking forward to your comments. Comments. Hopefully they're positive. And if they're critical, that's the price I pay as a YouTuber. I accept it. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.